hello guys and welcome back to the channel now guys i'm really loving the reaction that this amotekun thing is engendering amongst the malamis panic stations everywhere guys i bring you this amotekun will promote southwest southeast south south secession plan tanko yakasai so that's the headline amotekun will promote southwest southeast south south secession plans and this is a tanko yakasai saying this so now let's see now what the northerner has to say elder statesman tanko yakasai has said that the southwest security network codename operation amotekun is a private army in the making the founding member of arewa consultative forum in an interview with a journalist urged the yorubas to drop the security outfit and embrace the federal government's initiative on national security he warned that the idea is capable of encouraging the secession agenda of some elements in the southwest southeast and south south geopolitical areas of the country he equally warned amotekun operatives and those promoting them not to dare the national security forces so now this is the drum beats of uh, uh well you know what they are the drum beats for so let's carry on 50 years after the civil war are you satisfied with the level of unity that has been achieved so far so this is a question and answer session that uh, they are having with this guy so this is his answer to that no exactly no i believe we have made progress but we are not there yet so now this is the next question then how do we get there and this is his response to that if the government is not performing not this government alone but all government it becomes a serious problem if the government is not performing not this government but all governments then it becomes a serious problem the money that is supposed to be used for development is siphoned so very little is left for actual development so people are not seeing anything different secondly people are not engaged as they are suffering from unemployment we neglected power sector that would have helped us industrialize thereby creating job opportunities we are not even doing agriculture that can easily mobilize millions of nigerians through employment and job creation simultaneously if everybody is busy we would not be debating about trivial issues and nobody will be thinking of activities that would be secession in nature but you have them now particularly if you look at the ipub which is an attempt to revive secession in the southeast i know they cannot succeed but we should not have that at all in our country there are some indications even in the southwest and in the south south although promoters of those ideas are not movers and shakers they can't win local government elections either as councillors or as chairmen talk less as members of state assembly or national assembly or governor or president however anybody can start trouble it doesn't require a very important person or the man with a majority support to start trouble that is why i said there is still manifestations of disunity in this country so the next question that goes to him is like you said there are still manifestations of disunity some people also argue that the events that led to the civil war are still building up how do we avert this and this is how he answers that the events are building up in my observation in this country people see danger but they are afraid to speak out for one reason or the other and they would not speak out until it's too late for anybody to intervene i don't see people rising up to their responsibilities in this matter the media is not helping matters a non-entity will be turned into a very important person by the media when in actual sense is a paper tiger media overblows trivial issues which gives the wrong impression in the country 
everybody is in fear about this trend of disunity of this country but those talking about it are the insignificant people in society like i said anybody can start trouble and nobody can know how to quell it but the media has to be alive to its responsibilities of promoting national unity in averting disaster in the country Still talking about the events that led to the civil war, some people insist that a section of the country as the rider and others as the horse. What do you say to this? I know what you are talking about. It is unfortunate and I am having some concerns about that. People are talking about the ways the present government goes about making appointments in the country and many people expressed concern. I am a northerner, a full blood northerner. My parents, grandparents were from the north. There are so many thousands and millions of northerners who are also committed to national unity. There is a Hausa proverb. I don't know its equivalent in English. One piece of bean can spoil the entire pot of beans. I just translate literally. If the government or the presidency has vacancies for 10 people and for whatever reason he filled 9 with Hausa Fulani Muslim Northerners and gave one to the entire southern Nigeria including Christian Northerners there is no doubt that people would not be seeing things going the wrong way. I see it also. So that should read, there's no doubt that people would be saying things going the wrong way. And he says it also. So it uh, continues. But you should also see the other positive side. For instance, you have Nigerians who are northerners going about their business in the south, some trading, some working as night watchmen, some even going begging, yet they are free, nobody is disturbing them, nobody is killing them. You also find a lot of southerners going about their business across the entire country. Take the instance of the magnitude of Igbo man that goes about his business all over without let or hindrance over the country. These are the important aspects that people tend to ignore. Life is about survival. If people are free to go all over the country in search of uh, means of livelihood unmolested, it is very good and we have had it before. We had people going from the south to the north and from the north to the south but not to the magnitude that they are doing now. It should be noted and taken into consideration. What is your position on the Southwest Security Network? Amotekun. So that's the next question. What is your position on the Southwest Security Network? Amotekun. And this is what he has to say. Let's just get uh, the page right. There are security challenges all over the country. It is not a matter that concerns the Southwest alone. It is in the Southeast, South South, North Central, North West, and North East, all over. Killings, kidnappings, and robbery, etc. These are not limited to a particular area. They are all over the place. Nobody would doubt or dispute this. The way the Southwest is approaching the issue is wrong. Many times a wrong approach can kill a very good project. The whole approach was to give it ethnic dimension. Southwest has something positive and something negative. Something positive in the sense that they have no problem in understanding because all of them are one people. They speak the same language. They are either Muslim or Christian. They know how to relate with one another without discrimination. This is not the case all over the geo political zones. No geopolitical zone is like that. Yes, I know. People would say Southeast. Yes, obviously they are egos. They are all almost the same like the Southeast. This Amotekun is a private army in the making. A country like Nigeria that has experienced secession movement and an attempt at secession, there is no doubt that so many lives of Nigerians from both sides were lost in that process. Then Nigerians will be jittery. Any patriotic Nigerian will begin to open his eyes wider seeing this kind of thing happening. Since the problem is nationwide, a nationwide approach would make everybody happy. The president has set up a committee with the Inspector General of Police to look into the problem of insecurity in the country holistically and give a recommendation that would enable the federal government on its own or maybe either in collaboration with state 
or local governments to deal with the issue based on the recommendation that it considers appropriate. I prefer that approach, but I don't accept the approach of the Southwest for the simple reason that if you allow the Southwest to set up a semi-military outfit, particularly a security outfit that allows its personnel to carry guns, it doesn't matter whether you call it them guns, gun is gun, and nobody can assure that them guns will not one day turn into a proper or sophisticated guns and you are not sure that if you give somebody a damn gun he will not one day go somewhere and drop it and pick a proper gun to that extent i think the approach of the southwest was wrong it didn't take into consideration the sensitivity of the government and the people of nigeria so that's what he has to say on amateko so they ask him further so you are in support of the position of the federal government. So that's the next question. So you are in support of the position of the federal government. And this is what he has to say. I am in support of the initiative of the federal government. Southwest, Southeast, South, South, North, West, North, East and North Central should await the outcome of that exercise and get themselves keyed into it so that there will be a synergy in tackling the problem of insecurity in Nigeria. It is a very big issue that can be addressed through synergy or that can only, you should say, be addressed through synergy. That amoteko can be ordinary word in Yoruba but it can have many meanings. Why can't they adopt a term that can be understood by everybody? So amoteko means tiger or something, so like a big cat is effectively what it is. It's either a cheetah or a leopard or something like that. So there's no great mystery to it. So that's what amoteko means. So the next question, it seems only the core northerners are opposed to amoteko because the southeast, the south south and the middle belt are in support of it. Why? So that's the next question. It seems only the core northerners are opposed to Amoteko because the southeast, south south, and the middle belt are in support of it. And why is this? So now, this is now the questions that's been put to him. And uh, how does he answer? So let's uh, go. I am too old in this game to be bamboozled. Somebody cannot go and call a meeting of two or three people from each zone and say southeast, south south, and middle belt said this or that. In any case, why would the meeting not include the Northeast or the Northwest? Why adopting Godwin Oka's solution to Nigerian problem? Those people who are talking, I know them. For the past five years, they have been calling meetings. This middle belt is non-constitutional, non-legal, and can never be defined administratively, legally, or constitutionally. It is a slogan by politicians to win votes. It has no basis. What do they mean by middle belt? They mean not central, which is made up of six states. Out of those six states, only two are predominantly Christians. Even one is 70 to 30 percent Christian Muslim, and the other is 90 percent Christian and 10 percent Muslim. You cannot define a state or an area or administrative unit in a country along that line. In a multicultural society like Nigeria, you cannot define administrative divisions in terms of ethnicity or religion. And this is coming from a northerner, by the way, who defines nothing uh, outside of those parameters that because that's their core parameter, ethnicity and religion. But it carries on. So the next question that was put to him, the South-South has jumped into the fray of 2023 presidency. So they've now gone past Amoteko now. So the South-South has, has jumped into the fray for the 2023 presidency. The leaders within the week said it is the turn of the region to produce the president. What is your take on this? Jonathan was elected president and he ran for four years. Under normal circumstances, I would have no quarrel with their aspiration. I would have liked also to see them have the presidency for eight years as the Yorubas did, so that the issue of rotation and zoning will be entrenched into a system. The Yorubas have done two terms so they can come and complete their two terms. And then it will go to the north and when it returns, the southeast would have their turn. I said it in 2015 that if the country elected Buhari, 
it would take about 20 years for the Igbos in the southeast to produce the president. I said it, but nobody took it seriously. South South is now talking. They should have said that they have started and have done one term and so should be allowed to complete it. Now they are talking about it. Before then, the southeast had been talking about it. Whichever case, I would accept it. Two things. Somebody can dash you money, Naira Kobo, nobody will be a millionaire without working for it. Nobody will give you power. You need to look for power, work for it. It cannot be gotten just on a platter of gold. So the South East should also begin to warm into the Nigerian nation to begin to look for people they can win to support their aspiration so also the south south there is only one way of doing it by mobilizing support from other parts of the country as a matter of principle i don't quarrel with any of them so that is answer to that a very diplomatic answer so now they go back to the amotekon uh, question again and here is the next and last question the southwest seems irrevocably committed to amotekon where will it lead? So that's the last question. The Southwest seems irrevocably committed to Amotekon. Where will it lead? And here is how he answers. Will that be a declaration of intent to fight the authorities? You know that there is an abject poverty in this country. People are looking for where to get money. Anybody can gather people to demonstrate on his behalf in Nigeria. So I am not carried away about the demonstrations in support of Amatekun. People can go to disturb the peace if they want. People can distribute money to unemployed youths to begin to make trouble all over the country. Even the political parties don't have memberships today. People who joined them and paid money to be registered as members. So people you see in the streets demonstrating for whatever reason, somebody must have mobilized them. It is not something people do out of their volition. Don't be surprised if you see people demonstrating for Montecon, but they should not dare the security forces. So now there's a veiled threat in that closing line of course from this uh northern fulani man that don't dare the security so now it's a game of brinksmanship now because uh Boadi, of course would never ever um allow amotekun but then the south uh, western governors have hung now their reputation and their banner on this amotekun thing if they back down they're disgraced for life even though the Nigerian politicians know no shame, but then Buhari, of course, will not back down. So now what happens now with this Amotekun thing is a real uh, acid test for the Nigerian uh, experiment, for the Nigerian situation. And it is one that uh, people are watching with a close interest because, of course, the whole of the southern regions, not the, the Yorubas, the whole of the southern regions have vested interest in this thing and as this uh, reporter rightly put it to this uh, chap that was answering the question the south south the southeast the southwest and the middle belt are all for this idea so how can then just one small section of the country with one of the smallest populations by the way because the uh fulanese they are not up in numbers to the Igbos or the Yorubas, etc. So how can this small set of people determine what would be the faith of a, a larger group is really where the question is within the Nigerian space. And the other consideration that you have to have is that this is a fundamental human rights issue. This is a issue of life and death because human lives are now are being played with and are at risk within the Nigerian space now. And it is now the right to defend that right to life that has birthed this Amotekon situation. So it's a life or death situation effectively now that the Yorubas are, are now are contending with, with this Amotekon being the solution and the pushback, of course, from the Malamis. Conversations in the comment section, panic stations in the far north, in the core north, as they put it, but let them panic. But will the Yorubas yield? But then the Yorubas do have that reputation for yielding. They probably just negotiate themselves out of it or negotiate it to for towards 2023, etc. We don't know how this is going to play out, but this is certainly a game of uh, brinksmanship and whichever way it falls is about to be unfurled in front of our very eyes. Come share thoughts about all this with me in the comment section. But before you do that, 
click on the red subscribe button so it turns gray bell button notifies you every time i drop a new video then come tell me what you are making of this yoruba amotekun situation in the comment section so i'll leave you here carry on with you in the comment section but here i say peace